All right, so now are you ready for one of the main dishes here at MIT? This is uh, Jaime Perer, his head of Aero Astro. It's the most important Aero Astro department in the world. He will give us a sense of where they have been and where they're going. Thank you, Trond. Uh, with this introduction, it's kind of difficult to follow up, but um, aerospace is really changing. And one of the proofs that it's changing is the fact that having a conference like that a few years ago would have been unthinkable. Uh, starting up a company in aerospace years ago was, uh, was involved a lot of capital and uh, there were many, well, there were much fewer companies and the world was dominated by, by very large corporations. So, I'm the head of the department uh, here at MIT, uh, and the title of the talk has the 100 years in it, so I thought I'll dispense with, with the slide. I don't really have much time to talk about the history of the department, but as I said, we celebrated 100 years of flight at MIT in 2014, and uh, I think it's fairly accurate to say that the department, one way or another, has been uh, involved with, many, with any major advance uh, in aerospace uh, since its inception. Uh, since we are able to fly. Uh, that is through either work done in the department directly or a draper, which initially was part of the department, or through some of our alumni. But rather than talking about history, which is interesting as it is, uh, is, is probably the topic for another presentation, I really want to focus on the future. And nothing uh, perhaps more appropriate than uh, talk a little bit about a strategic plan. Um, Whenever in the department, we really need to foresee what's going to happen in aerospace. And the reason why we do that is because we hire people, we make investments. And some of the people that we hire are going to be with us for 30 years. That's quite typical for the, the, the life of a faculty in, with, within a department. So it's kind of a very difficult to foresee what what's the future is going to bring. And this is why we spend a lot of time doing that. So this is a strategic plan that we started in 2012. We put a lot of effort into those plans, try to read what's going to be important in the next 10 years, what are the things that are going to happen in the sector. And just going to summarize for you what we think are going to be the main players. So here are some uh, facts about aerospace. Uh, they might be known to many of you, but uh, but I think they are generally unknown or underestimated for the large population. I'm not going to read through all of them, but uh, it's really a major uh, contributor to our economy. I think we underestimate how important it is, and uh, the danger of complacency is really something that the country may pay very dearly, unless we really put effort into it. But you can see the numbers here. Our world would look, or our society would look very different without aerospace. That has to do with transports, with generation of technologies, and with contributions directly to, to the economy. So uh, things that we see uh, happening, uh, we, we think that aerospace has a great outlook. There is a big role for us to play. And uh, this is uh, the description of the current scenario in, in some aspects, some of the things that are happening. We see a continued globalization, which means oops, uh, that we are seeing, uh, whenever you look at uh, a large increase in, in air transportation, that's already fairly obvious. Uh, all the companies that build large transports, Boeings and Airbuses, they have order books for the next four or five years. So the question is really how to make those aircraft cheaper. Sorry, I just want to go to that one. So increased demand in air transportation, a strong energy and environmental pressure. So these two things are kind of at odds with each other. We are seeing a tremendous US, UAS expansion and manned aerospace systems expansions, uh, both for uh, military and civil applications. And uh, we are also seeing a growth in commercial space, space launches. And this is enabled by miniaturization. We are able to make a smaller satellites. That means that it's a lot cheaper to put mass into space. In addition to that, we see a crisis uh, coming in terms of generating or having enough, educating enough people to really support this enterprise. So this is why our role as educators becomes important. But based on all these findings, we really came up with three areas. This is not to say that there are no other areas where things will happen, but we think that most of the activity is going to happen in these domains. And one is air transportation, tremendous growth, tremendous challenges. The other one is autonomous systems, nothing uh, new there, but uh, it's, it's really happening and is affecting uh, the whole landscape and our lives. And the other one is the small satellites. 
uh, which have already been mentioned by one of the startups. One slide on each of those to tell you what we think the main challenges are. Uh, in, in the air transportation domain, the challenge is, is written here is to really satisfy the growing demand uh, of air transportation while, while addressing the challenge of uh, energy and environmental constraints. And in order to do that, there is going to be no single bullet that's going to solve all the problems, but we are going to need to make advances in operations in, uh, air, transport, in uh, air traffic control, new technologies, and most, most importantly, manufacturing. We need to be able to make uh, those planes cheaper, lighter, and, and more effectively. So a, multi a multidisciplinary problem with many challenges that is going to uh, generate opportunities for, for many new technologies. In the area of autonomous systems, uh, again, a big impact. The obvious things are drones. Everybody is talking about drones, but we see many potential opportunities for autonomy in aerospace in areas such as manufacturing. Again, making those airplanes, getting them out of the line efficiently uh, and economically uh, will require a lot of development. 3D printing, maybe some of the technologies that will help on that, but also autonomy. We need to automate the process of building these, these aircraft. And uh, again, uh, autonomy will play a big role, and I'm not saying anything new, only to say that a lot of the applications uh, will obviously be in the civilian domain. The military is already uh, obvious, but in the civilian domain, we're going to see more and more applications and also uh, manufacturing and exploration. A lot of the new exploration uh, of the space, I think, is going to happen through autonomy and a uh, big role to play there. On the small satellites, as already been said, miniaturization is an enabler. Making the smaller satellites, uh, smaller masses, allows you to make things a lot cheaper. Weight is really the figure of merit. And two technologies which are, we think are particularly important for smaller satellites, one is propulsion, has already been mentioned by this company, Action Systems, technology that came out of one of our labs. The other one is optical communications. You really want to be able to do point-to-point -point communications, not to pollute the whole uh, air environment with, with electromagnetic waves, you really want to be as one-dimensional as you can, and that will allow you much larger capacities uh, for communication. So I'm about to close, but just to say that uh, this is what we call new aerospace, is enable uh, a small projects, a small uh, uh, activities that our students can undertake that are no longer toy problems. Some of these uh, devices generated in the department actually get to fly. As you see for this satellite here, this uh, micromass project. And uh, this is also a project done by our students. And uh, just to see that after a couple of years of further development, this project uh, led to the Perdix, which is one of the small aircraft adopted by the Pentagon uh, and released. This is a uh, press release that was made. So all I'm trying to say is that nowadays you need very little to really get onto something useful and the opportunities are there and abound. So I'll close with some of the recent startups from alums in the department and that's uh, my 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs>